general relativity step by step. Last time I came up with this formula for the contraction of the Christoffel symbol, um, summed over i of course, and um, I've got this formula here, but it's rather difficult to evaluate. So I'm going to have I'm going to split into two options. So we've got option one, which I'll do right now, is just to state what this equals. Gamma symbol i i k Christoffel symbol equals a half g minus one di g by di x k, where g equals the determinant of the matrix given by row i column j for the metric tensor. That's option one. Um, and if you're happy with that, that's great. Um, it's just a result of matrix theory. Uh, you can move on to the next one. If you're not happy with it, this is option two, which is to prove this. Um, before I start proving this, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to get something off my chest here. When I've been preparing this, this uh, course, I've been looking through five or six different general relativity books, and every single one of them just asserts that this formula is obvious. Well, it's not obvious. And in fact, some of the books, who will remain nameless, just put this equals this, as it, just with one line, with no explanation. And some of the books even put it in as one of the exercises, which I think is even worse. So I'm going to prove it. This is general relativity step by step after all, so I'm going to prove it. Okay, so how do we start? Well, we need a couple of lemmas first. The first lemma, which we're going to need, is this. It is that the uh, trace of A transpose B equals sum over i and j of a i j b i j uh, and i'm going to prove that lemma uh, so a and b are square elements square matrices and uh, the trace of a matrix a equals uh, a11 plus a22 plus a33 plus all the way along to ann equals the sum of the major diagonal. The trace is a very interesting and useful uh, operator to turn, uh, or it maps uh, uh, square matrices to to the real line, which is which is quite nice. Uh, I'm actually I'm not going to prove this. I'm going to I'm just going to uh, well I'll show you why it's true. So suppose that A is the matrix A11, A12, A21, A22, and B is the matrix B11, B12, B row 2, column 1, B row 2, column 2. Then, uh, okay, and I'm going to look at um, sigma AIJ, BIJ, and that's summed over I and J. And that's going to equal A11, B11, plus A12, B12, plus A21, B21, plus A22, B22. Notice there's no restriction on the form of A and B here, other than they are square matrices. Okay, well, I'm just going to evaluate uh, the left-hand side. So the trace of A transpose B. Incidentally, when you see this... Um, it, the trace refers to everything on the right hand side. It's not the trace of the first thing times b. It, it's, it's the trace of everything on the right hand side. So you quite often see in, in textbooks uh, the, the brackets missing. Well, that equals the trace of a11, a21, a12. You see, I've swapped these two guys over. a22, b11, b row 1, column 2, b row 2, column 1, b row 2, column 2 equals uh, the trace of this matrix here. Uh, top left is A11, B11, plus A21, B21, plus something. doesn't matter what that is, because, well, I could evaluate it, of course I could, but I'm, I'm not going to, plus some of the stuff here. Uh, what's the lower right? Do, 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 do. Lower right, it's A12, this term times that one, B12, you can see how it's working already, plus a22b22. 
And of course, I don't need to evaluate these things here because I'm taking the trace, which is equal to A11B11 plus A21B21 plus A12B12 plus A22B22 equals the sum over I and J of AIJ, BIJ, QED. Let's just recap. QED. Let's just recap. I'm asserting that the trace of A transpose B equals this thing on the right hand side, and we'll see how useful that is in a minute. Okay, so there's my trace. There's my first lemma. Lemma two. Uh, lemma two. What's lemma two? If A is a square matrix, a square matrix, then, well, there's different ways of expressing this, but I'll, I'll, yeah. Then, and we've got A going to A plus delta A, where delta A is small. And I'm going to put that in quotes. What I mean is small enough to neglect second order terms. A goes to A plus delta B. Then Jacobi's formula and I've got it set up here on my uh, uh, Firefox here. Uh, Jacobi's formula is a standard result in matrix algebra. You can see they've used uh, in the Wikipedia page, they've used here the lemma that I've just shown you. Um, here it is. You can read it yourself. That Wikipedia is an excellent source of information, but I'm going to give you my own slightly weird spin on it because I'm going to use it for relativity rather than linear algebra. Uh, Jacobi's formula says this, that delta of the determinant of A equals the determinant of A times the trace of A to the minus 1 delta A. Now what you see in the um, books is you see something called an adjugate of A, which equals, see if I can get this right, that's the determinant of A times A minus 1, if A is invertible. Invertible. If it's not invertible, the adjugate is still defined, it's just defined in terms of cofactors and a whole bunch of other stuff. In fact, why not have a look at it? Uh, it says here, oh look, it's says adjugate. Uh, is adjugate here? Adjugate of A, here it is. Give it a minute. Adjugate matrix, a whole bunch of stuff. It's one of these things that you kind of read about once when you study linear algebra and then you think, right, well, never again. Uh, look here. So the, yeah, it, it's it's there. I'll just minimize that. So delta of the determinant of A equals the determinant of A times the trace of A minus 1 delta A. Um what this means in practice, you quite often see delta of the log of the determinant of A equals just this bit, trace of A minus 1 delta A. This is the one that you see in linear algebra more often, or at least I've encountered it. This, this one is, well, it's true, but it's not, not as useful as this in, 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 in general. But I'm going to ignore that. Um... And I'm not going to prove it because it's proved on the Wikipedia page, but I'm going to demonstrate that it's true um, numerically. So just give me a second. Uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is demonstrate it numerically by the R programming language, which is here. So what I've got here is uh, a nice little computer language, and I'm going to set A becomes a random matrix. Matrix of random normal numbers, and I'm going to make it 25 so it's a 5 by 5 matrix, there it is, and I can calculate the determinant of A just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define DA, which is another random matrix, but I'm going to make it small by multiplying by 10 to the minus 6 here. So I've got D, oops, delta A is, a, oh that's 10 to the 6, just a minute, 10 to the minus 6. So DA uh, is small. You see how these... I'll make that a bit bigger so it doesn't wrap round. Let's try that again. There's my matrix A, and here's my matrix delta A, which is times 10 to the minus 6 and 7. These are small numbers here. 
So let's just remind myself what I'm trying to do here because it's easy to get uh, tangled. Actually, I can do that. Uh, I can do that. I'm trying to show this. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to try to show delta delta of debt A. So what I mean there is debt of A plus delta A minus debt of A equals to first order. Determinant of A times the trace of A minus 1 matrix multiplication delta A. Now where's my R window gone? Okay. So let's work out the left hand side. Oh, actually, I need to work out. I need to write a trace function. Trace becomes a function. Oops. Function of a matrix which returns the sum of the diagonal elements of them. So we've got matrix A, trace of A. Oops. A. It's just the sum of the diagonals. So it's minus one plus minus two plus that plus that plus that. It comes out to be minus five. Okay. So let's work out the determinant of A plus delta A, oops, which is that, and the determinant of A on its own is that. You see they're slightly, slightly different. So we'll work out the delta minus debt of A, 1.82 times 10 to the minus 6. A, a small change. Uh, now, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to show that it's equal to this this formula here. So I'll just, I'll just write it out. Debt A times the trace of A to the minus 1 times delta A. Let me just do that. Uh, just a minute. Go back to my R. I need the trace of A minus 1 is solve A. That's the matrix inverse of A. Matrix multiplied by delta A. And this should be the same. No, is it? What have I done wrong here? Ah, it's because I need to multiply by the determinant. Debt of A times that. So just to make it absolutely clear, we've got a scalar determinant multiplied by the trace, which is a scalar, of the matrix inverse matrix multiplication with delta A. And this number should agree with that number. There it is, 1.8280431. There you go. So they're certainly agreeing to first order. Actually, while I've got R here, I may as well just show you numerically that this little formula here is true. Trace of A transpose B equals uh, the sum. No, that's a bit, uh, the, 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 these two guys here are equal. So I'll just do that while I've got R open. So I've got my matrix A there. I'm going to define another matrix B. B becomes a matrix of random normal numbers. We're going to have 25 of them in a 5x5 five five matrix. There's, there's A and there's B. Trace of the transpose of A times B is that. And the sum of A times B is going to be the same thing. And if I was doing this absolutely properly, I'd do the trace of the cross prod of A and B, which is a lot faster than matrix multiplication. OK, so I've established, numerically at least, I've established the truth of the, the equality of here, of these two, these, two, these two expressions here. OK, so where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? So I'm going to rewrite this in a little, I'm going to rewrite this in a slightly different format. I'm going to say that die the no no I keep on I keep on uh, when I write when I write that I think that that's the symbol I'm used to working with so so I I, I, I sometimes I sometimes get a bit distracted so die by die x of the determinant of a equals from this formula here debt a times times well from from my lemma it, it's from from the lemma up here it's just this thing here there it is times sigma over i and j a minus one i j die a i j by die x okay 
simply by this this formula here because I know that the trace of the product of two matrices equals the sum of the element-wise product of those elements and I've just differentiated with respect to di x. So that's what we've got here. Now what am I trying to do? We have established already on the previous screencast that a a b equals a half g no we haven't we've established that it equals die by die x b I think I might have had a different symbol there sorry about that I had a, a little glitch um, equals a half g i j die g i j by die x b we established that on the last screencast so i'm going to rewrite that that's equal to a half sum g to the minus 1 i j because you'll remember that the inverse met mat uh, mat uh, metric tensor here with superscripts equals the matrix inverse of the g uh, tensor with subscripts times die g downwards i j by die x b over i and j summed over i and j because we've got a superscript and a subscript well that equals a half well it's this thing here it's this thing here 1 over the determinant of the matrix G, just taking that debt over the other side, times die debt G by die X B. Uh, should be an A there. Equals 1 half, different people write it in different ways, G minus 1 die g by die x b where g equals the determinant of the metric tensor and there's our result a b contracted over a i guess it's summed over a and this drives me nuts that was quite hard you need two different results from different parts of matrix algebra you need to apply them correctly you need to spot that the formula for the trace of A transpose B is relevant in this case. You need to know Jacobi's formula, which is this thing here. Uh, it, there's a hell of a lot going on here. It's just a difficult thing to do. And the books just say this obviously equals this. At least all the books I've read do. Or put it in the... It's not good enough. It, it really is not good enough. It, all it does is make people annoyed. It's the kind of thing I learned 20 years ago. And you think, oh yeah, ho, ho, ho. And then you forget about it. And then, that's not, it's not good enough. I've got to make sure that this formula is demonstrated and proved to be correct. And I know this has been a long screencast, but I don't expect everybody will be wanting to watch it because it is just a standard result from matrix algebra. It's just matrix algebra that's quite sophisticated. So I'm going to stop there. I'll, I'll stop my rant there. Stop.